Hello Book Club, hosted by Heather Skinner. We are so happy to be here with our January 2023 feature author that you, the members, voted in. This interview and excerpt reading will post in three parts. So please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already to ensure that you will get notified as each next video posts this month while we feature Linda Rosen and her wonderful book, Sisters of the Vine. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and meet you in, in person and Gemma. <laughs> yeah. We're excited to meet you too. Oh my gosh. And Gemma was commenting before we started recording. It looks like we're almost in the same place because our backgrounds mesh right. together we so well. Yeah. Different rooms in the same house. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom, bringing people together. Book clubs, bringing people together. I love it. Right. And Gemma is super excited because she not only has one question for you, two. she is two. So would you mind holding up your beautiful book that we get to feature this month, Sisters of the Vine? There you go. There's I my placeholder, but... <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> do you remember your first question? Um, Do they live in um a forest? Oh, no. No, they don't. Um, Liz, that's the main character, she lives on a farm. And then huh? she has this beautiful vineyard up on a hill. I love that because her first thought, she was like, vines, jungles, forests, they must be somewhere yeah. just so exotic. And I love and how that- grow in a vineyard and it could, you need a lot of sun, so it couldn't be a forest. Oh, yes. Cool. And that was another question you had when you found out it's a vineyard and we talked a little bit more about it. What was your next thought about the grapes? Oh, uh, do they squish the grapes with their feet? <laughs> Do they, what? I'm sorry. Squish, it's okay. Squish the grapes with their feet. <laughs> oh, no, only Lucy. And I love Lucy did that. <laughs> but that's way before her time. <laughs> I, we like to watch the old stuff like that, too. One of her favorite shows with me is Bewitched. We still watch all the I old stuff. I love Bewitched. I love Bewitched. Yeah. No, I wonder if anybody ever actually did that. No, they don't. They have big machines that do that. But it would be fun. <laughs> Wouldn't it? <Yeah. laughs> I don't know if I'd want to drink the juice after I had my feet in it, though. I don't think I'd want to either. I, I would take no. a bath before and after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder, it'd probably be stain you. But it can't, it can't oh, walk yeah. out easily. Oh, yeah. You'd have red feet. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, maybe white, depending on the grape. <laughs> That's true. And that leads me to a question I actually have for both of you. I thought it was so cool that when I was reading your description, it mentioned specifically, I think American French hybrid grapes. And it made me think I have never once before reading that description thought of anything beyond going to the store and saying green or red this week. Like, and I never <laughs> thought about how many different types of grapes there are. And it's so cool. I looked it up. I think the search I, I looked at said there are about 15 different types. So I think first I want to ask you, what's your favorite type of grape? Oh, red. You like the red? See, that's our knowledge. I like the green, but I can't wait to hear your answer because I think it's going to be much more detailed. <laughs> um, no, it's not going to be much more detailed. <laughs> there are many, many different um, varieties of grapes that you plant to make wine. Those aren't necessarily, those aren't eating grapes. That, that's a different grape. The ones that we get, you know, in the store, you don't make wine from those grapes. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know, um, you know, my favorite, was it purple, red, green? I'm a sneaky shopper. I just did this the other day. I opened the little bag of red grapes and pulled one out and it wasn't sweet and I didn't like it. So <laughs> I took the green because it had a good snap to it and sweet. I don't think you're the only one who does that. I don't There's think always so a way either. to test a fruit or, or a vegetable to <laughs> see if you want to so buy either. it. Yeah. But but grapes for um wine are different types. There are many different vinifera. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite type of wine? I prefer white wines, a nice dry, crisp white, like a Sauvignon Blanc. I do, but I drink lots of different reds and whites. I just like wine. <laughs> I love it. It comes through in the book too. It's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Oh, thank you for giving them. Bye-bye. Hold up um, your books one by one 
and just kind of give us your description of them. Okay. Well, Secrets of the Vine, I love the way you put it on your website and the little, the part that you pulled out um, with Rick about not having dinner ready. I mean, whatever yeah. quote you <laughs> love. That. So this takes place in the late 60s, well, through 1960s and 70s. Um, really, it's it's a sisterhood book. Liz is left with this enormous vineyard and she has no idea how she's going to get it. Get the, It was right before harvest and how is she going to get it done? And this land means a great deal to her and she will do anything to keep the land and to keep the sisterhood that's been formed around the land. So, I mean, she walks down her mile long lane, not knowing what she's going to do, how to get these grapes picked. And she goes down her mile long lane and starts knocking on Doors, people she never knew, stay-at-home moms who know absolutely nothing about grapes, wine, anything, and they all come and give her a hand, and the story proceeds from there. <laughs> How they break into the all-male fraternity of winemaking, which really was a tough thing back in the 60s and 70s. You didn't have women winemakers and women winery owners unless there was a man along with them. Yeah, it's so interesting reading this and just kind of getting the feel of that time period and, and environment yeah. then um, yeah. and really having it come to the forefront of thought too. It is really interesting to see those perspectives. Yeah, it was um, it was tough for women. They really, you know, as my I'm part of my bio is my books are set in the not too distant past. Um, when I found out this was historical fiction, it kind of made me gulp, like the 60s and 70s are historical. <laughs> you know? That is a little scary. It already has that <laughs> title with it. But um, I really wanted to show what, well, I wanted this great sisterhood story. I always wanted to write a sisterhood story, but I wanted to show what it was like, you know, for women. I mean, even farther back, which, I have in my next book coming out, but um, it was, it wasn't easy. It just was not easy for women. Um, in the news just recently, Barbara Walters, if you remember, she recently died. Yeah. She's a, she is like the epitome of that. She was in the 60s um, when she got into journalism. Women just could not do that. And now you turn on the news and women are all over, you know, but she was a groundbreaker for that. Yeah, those pioneers of history, kind of, and yes. you, you've added Liz into that in your story. Yes. That's what I wanted to do, yes. <laughs> I love it. And then if you want to go ahead and show your oh, other absolutely. book, too. The, dis the Disharmony of Silence, you probably see it opposite, whatever, I always, that always happens on videos, you see them the opposite. Oh, way. no, it looks for, it looks oh, right to me, it doesn't look real. mirrored. Okay, in my camera, it's opposite. Um this is my debut. It came out one week before the world was locked down for COVID in 2020. Um, this is a dual timeline. It goes back and forth between the 1920s and like the 21st century, pretty much uh, 2010 time period. Um, and it's about deep, dark family secrets that my character, Carolyn, discovers 85 years later, and she, she's she been desperate for family. Her mother's dying, she's not married, no kids, no, no siblings, no family, desperate for family. And when she discovers this really dark secret, she's determined to reveal it because it could get, bring her everything she wants, but it could also destroy other people's lives. Wow. And it, with all my books, um, there's jewelry. So yes. in this harmony of silence on the cover, there's a cameo. And it's the cameo in a painting that Carolyn notices that makes her go on this search for who is the artist and why does she have that cameo, which is rare. And it's the exact same cameo that's in her mother's jewelry box. How come? Ooh. in that painting and I do have a cameo and that kind of set me off I have the cameo that's actually on the cover of the book in uh, Sisters of the Vine I have a three carat marquee diamond I don't have that 
<laughs> in my next book coming out, I have an emerald necklace. So there's always a few stories. I love that. How did that theme come about where you decided to connect your work with the piece? Well, of it's jewelry? interesting. I wrote, I, I wrote Disharmony of Silence and, you know, it centered with the cameo. And then Sisters of the Vine came out and I learned that I had to brand myself. I didn't know that I was a brand. And the wonderful Lisa Montanero um, was helping to brand me. And she said, you know, you have jewelry in both your books. That's part of your brand. And then I realized from now on, I have to have jewelry in my books. But it helped me to write the Emerald Necklace, which is coming out in May, because I had to have a start. Okay, I need to have jewelry. Now let's think about that. You know, and then all ideas came. And then now I have to think about jewelry. And it's going to kind of set me off to at least come up with characters and plot because it'll center around jewelry somehow. Even if it's just slipped in, I don't know if it's going to be major, but we'll see. I still love that. You can write about so many different time periods and, and storylines and have that one connection of your work. I think that's so unique yeah. and, and cool. I've never seen anything quite like that. And I think it's really cool. I, I love it. Um, it just like, it made me blossom, you know, like, oh, I really, you know, <laughs> it's really something. I think a lot of authors though do. And I'm talking about not writing a series because I don't write a series. And, you know, so any author who's not writing a series still does have a type of brand of whatever you know, whatever it may be. It may not be as obvious as a piece of jewelry, but. <laughs> That's a good point. And I know you kind of branch off and do other things too, because I've noticed you've, you've got a collection of, well, not a collection, but you do write short stories as well um, that people can find, I think, through links on your website. Um, so what's that like for you? Do you like to write short stories as much as long novels or what's that difference for you? Okay, actually I started writing short stories before I wrote a novel. I was taking writer's workshops and we would be given a prompt and like 10 minutes to write. So I, that was the most exciting because I was very new to writing and I, the words just started to flow. And if I got a good response from the group in the class, then I would take it and just kept going with it. So my short stories really are more um, flash fiction because they're pretty much under a thousand words, maybe 1500. Um, you know, I, I don't write short stories like, you know, big ones. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, and then when I started writing the novel, I stopped with the short stories because I just really like, I like the novel. I like developing the characters and it's really hard to do in a short story to develop a character fully in such a short period of time but yeah I love I love reading novels and that's what I wanted to write I wanted people to sit back with a you know cuddle up with a book that I wrote and I don't I don't get the same feeling myself reading short stories I mean they're great but Oh, I like to sink into a novel. Oh, I love that. And I saw, I think I wrote it down here. You're a part of a couple different organizations too. <laughs> I'm part of the Women's National Book Association, which is a nationwide organization began in 1917 when women were not allowed into the American Booksellers Association. So there you go. Another thing with women weren't allowed. Um, a group of women booksellers in New York City got together and they formed WNBA books, not basketball. And it was several years later when the American Booksellers Association, all male, came to them and said, do you want to join us? And they said, no, we don't need you now. But now years, you know, hundreds, a hundred some odd years later, there are women in the American Booksellers Association. But yeah, we have chapters across the country. I'm the founder of the South Florida chapter. And it's made up of not only writers, but anybody in the book world. I mean, readers, um, editors, publishers, uh, you know, agents, um, you know, teachers, you, librarians, booksellers. It's a wonderful organization and you can look for it 
wnba-books.org. You might have a chapter near you in your city. And we have wonderful programs nationwide, you know, nationally and each chapter themselves. And I'm also in the Women Fiction Writers Association, which has opened up my world. You know, I've met so many writers through that. And it's also a terrific organization. And I'm on Facebook in another group. I am one of the administrators, one of the tour guides of Bookish Road Trip. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that page. <laughs> An editor of the newsletter, Wanderlust. Oh, that's so cool. You keep busy. <laughs> I'm busy. busy. And also, oh, I'll throw another one in. And this all happened like in the past three years. So, well, no, WNBA, I've been a member for a very long time. But the others all happened since I, you know, was writing and publishing The Disarmory of Silence. Um, the Author Talk Network. You can find us on the web, the Author Talk Network. And we are a group of, I don't know right now if we're still 19 or 17 or whatever, authors. And um, we do presentations, we do webinars, we do talks, you know, if your group, any kind of group wants it. We have our all our suggestions on there. We have best-selling authors, unknown authors, just everybody. <laughs> That's so great. I, I'm wondering now, hearing all the things that you do, how do you separate your time for writing and also being a reader um, and, and keeping up with everything you keep up with? <laughs> I love reading. It's a passion. So I'm reading every day at some point, every day. Um, it's just juggling time because many writers do write full time. They can, I mean, I have a friend who gets down at her computer, I would think at six o'clock in the morning or something. Um, I'm not one of those writers who writes all day long. I have too many other things that I enjoy doing. And it's not a full-time job for me. There's a difference. There is, I came to writing later in life. So I have that allowance, however you want to put that. Um, so, you know, I'm not writing full-time, but I do, when I'm really writing, I will write several, a few hours each day, but it might be in the afternoon. It might be in the morning. Depends, <laughs> but I get it in or sometimes I have to make a date with myself. There may be days that I don't write at all, but I say, okay, tomorrow, Wednesday, you know, for example, I am staying in in the morning and I'm going to do a few hours. And then Thursday, I may go out and play pickleball in the morning and come back and write in the afternoon. And maybe Friday, I'm out with friends and doing something else. So, okay, by Saturday afternoon, I better sit down and write again. That it, it works for me. <laughs> I like that. And you're doing activities like keeping moving too, because I think um, I've watched a few other interviews that you've been in and you mentioned that you're a fitness professional. Yes, yes, I I'm still working only in the summers um, when I'm back up in New Jersey and I teach aquasize to the same group I've had for 36 years. Um, wow. But for many, for over, I don't know, over 35, 38 years, I was, you know, had a small business and I taught classes and from age three up to 90. <laughs> and so, yeah, exercise, physical fitness, you know, just it's part of my life. It's who I am. I think that's a great mix to have that background as your career and, and what you put your time in, as well as being an author, because I feel like it's so easy to just sit as an author at a computer and forget like the day goes by and it's like, I haven't stretched, <laughs> Ooh, I need water. Like, I think that must give you such a great balance. Well, when I am writing, I mean, I can forget to eat lunch if I'm writing, you know, you really get deep into your scene and your characters and you're busy, busy, busy. And then I step back and I, okay. And I would tell people as a fitness professional, I would tell people don't sit at your computer for hour after hour, set a timer, get up walk around, but I'm guilty when I'm writing. It's like I say, oh my gosh, it's two hours. I better get up and do something. <laughs> but very often when I'm walking or when I'm swimming, dialogue comes to me, plot points, characters, I mean, that, you know, it all comes to me. So the writing is always there in my head. I may not be at the computer putting it down on paper. 
I like that. Oh, and, you know, I think a lot that. of people don't realize that's part of the process too. Like you are still writing, even if you're not at the computer. Oh, you're uh, lying in bed, taking a shower. Great ideas come in the shower when you cannot write them down. I'm still waiting for the person to make something that's waterproof that we can there write is, on our There files. is. I have them. They're yeah. called Aqua Notes. And you can get them on Amazon. Yeah. So they're waterproof and it comes with its own little pencil and you can just suction cup it right up there. (laughs) I will look that up because the greatest idea comes or the right word comes to me. And, you know, I I just can't get out of shot fast enough to write it down. Yes. I used to have that problem too. I don't know what it is about just the water and the calm and the quiet. And then all of a sudden it's it's click in the the shower. Yeah. And and it's any time that I'm totally alone quiet totally alone yeah yes they're called aqua notes i'll I'll remind you later if you need the name (laughs) Uh, oh something else in one of your previous interviews i watched that i found so interesting um you said in an interview that you were looking for a photography workshop when you found your first writing workshop which i think is so cool and something i noticed about both your covers they seem to be photographs so is that something, did you take those pictures or did you like, Oh, I would love to cover designer. That, but no, I, the cover designer, the cover designer did those. Oh, that would be really nice. But no, it didn't. Happen. No. Um, as I said, I came to writing later in life. I was a fitness professional. I was teaching fitness classes, um, running a small business with it. And I was always creative, but doing the stuff that everybody does. I crocheted. I, I did dabble in photography and garden, you know, all, all that stuff. Um, painting is not my forte, but I do do ceramics. Uh, but I was looking for a photography class in a local uh, adult school. And I came across a writer's workshop and I just thought, wow, that would be great. Why not? I always thought how fabulous it would be to write a book that, as I said, that somebody would cuddle up with, with a cup of tea or a glass of wine and just sink into a book written by me. Never really thought it would ever happen. But I'm an avid reader. I've been in book clubs. I love doing book clubs. Before I wrote, I, oh, I mean, it was such a thrill to have an author come to our book club or, you know, at the time, Originally, it was actually on, um, how did we do it? It was way before Zoom or FaceTime or anything, you know, whatever. Probably, like, like, did you meet at libraries or I something? Think, but whatever, it was a speakerphone. Yeah. I love doing book clubs. So thank you for this book club. But I'm so excited doing- you're here because I noticed too, you have a challenge on your website. You mentioned like a hundred book club oh, challenge. God, I need to get that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I challenged myself to do a hundred book clubs. Well, I'm not quite there yet, but if you'd like to help me get there. <laughs> we will uh, spread the I word. It takes time. A hundred is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. I don't know. I, I came up with that. <laughs> you know? Well, you can I count us as one, did. one more. <laughs> I did know an author who did it. Know me Eve. And she challenged herself to a hundred and she got to 200 something, probably more. Wow. And, um, Silly me put it in for one year. I mean, you know, come on. Now the year is uh, gone. <laughs> but yes, I love doing book clubs. And that was part of it. I thought when I saw the writer's workshop, I'm gonna try it. And oh my gosh, do it. And now that I have the books out, two are out, one is you know, the third is coming out, the fourth is running around my head. It, it just still it blows me away. <laughs> and yeah, I love doing book clubs. So if anybody's out there, you know. Yeah, I love that. I know our members, they tend to be a part of a lot of other book clubs <laughs> as well, which is right. so great. It's right. The farthest I've gone in person um, is Utah. I'm an East Coast woman, but I have a friend in Utah. So I was visiting her and did that book club. But if I can get to you by Zoom or by car, I will come. I love it. All right, members, spread the word. Linda Rosen is offering a giveaway opportunity. At the end of this month, one lucky winner will be selected to win a signed copy of Sisters of the Vine, 
or an ebook version if you're outside of the US. All you have to do to enter is follow Linda Rosen on BookBub and then let us know in the comments that you followed. Good luck to all who enter. And thank you again so much for watching. Remember to tune in next Monday for part two of today's interview. Happy reading.